Okay, so this is part two of the Mega Dungeon level two. I'm Daniel, this is Bandit's Keep, if uh, if you're not jumping here from the last video. And um, I feel like effectively we have created uh, all the things that we're going to use, the tools, let's say, to make this level work. We've got all our monsters, wandering monsters, treasure, map, etc. Now in this video, we're going to put it all together to basically turn it into an adventure. So without further ado, let's do it. Which is here. And if we look at the lower, I'm going to blow this up a little bit, this lower area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to designate each of these areas with a letter. So the Neanderthal area is going to be A. So I'm going to make this first room, this long room down here, A1. Okay, and this is where we're going to place um, some, you know, stuff that we want to uh, to be sure of. Whenever you're doing one of these dungeons, it's kind of the, the BX way, if you want to call it, um, what you want to do is place anything that you want to place first and then mess around with the rest of it. So this, this area, the way I drew it is, um, these are basically crypts. Um, this is an old uh, tomb or whatever, you know, they've kind of, kind of crawled into. You can see that some of the doors are kind of, uh, or, you know, they've been opened up and some of it's decayed. There's a, there's some fallen stone on, to, on the left-hand side, which leads to a passage, which is a secret passage. There is uh, some of these are busted open, including one that leads, uh, you know, up into here, which is how they kind of get to where they're going. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take uh, the, the 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 tombs that are closed. OK, not that one, this one and these ones. So one, two, three, four of them. And that's where basically most of the treasure is going to be. So let's go over here and look at the screen again. And we'll say area A. And I'm going to say, um, ancient tomb. Some opened and used as sleeping areas, comma, some still field, period. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the Neanderthal's treasure and I'm actually going to put a decent amount of it right here because I feel like they wouldn't have known what this stuff is like for sure. I'm going to put the potion of levitation in the spell scroll. And then otherwise we've got, we'll put 3000 copper pieces in one of them as well. Um, so there's four areas, right? So again, I mean, I think most people running this would roll randomly when they open each one. And then of course, as you get further and further into it, you would, once you've discovered something, you just, uh, Move on to the next one. The rest of the treasure I'm going to scatter around for the Neanderthals. Because, again, I don't know. I mean, they're shiny pieces of jewelry. So they might hold on to them, uh, you know, thinking, hey, they're they're pretty cool. So I don't see any reason why they might not have them somewhere else in their, their area. So we're going to roll. If we end up that there is actually extra treasure, I'll put it back in this room. And what I mean by extra treasure is let's take a look at the map again. And we're going to go through each room. And we're going to roll using the, the BX book to see what might be in the room. So let's go. We're going to go back to the book. This is the BX book here. Now it's kind of explain it. We can't have both up on the screen at once. So essentially, when you look at this, each room is going to either, you're going to roll 2d6, basically. The first d6 is monster, trap, special, enemy, empty, rather. And then ba then based on that, you roll a second d6, and it tells you if there's a if there's treasure, right? So we're going to roll for each room. We'll see what's in there, and we'll we'll place the Neanderthals as we go. Now, this first room, I definitely want to have monsters in here, so I'm going to put um, a D10 Neanderthals. Actually, because I know that I, this is their main thing, I'm going to do like a D10 plus 5, because it's their living area. All right, so 7 plus 5 is 12 Neanderthals are going to be in this uh, in this room number 1. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to just mark this down. 12... Neanderthals at all times. You know, obviously they're not the same Neanderthals each time, right? You know, um, and sometimes people say, oh, that's so weird. You should, but you know, the reality is, is that it's a game and I'm not going to worry too much about that. You could make it random each time, but I just think it's easier just to do that. So that's area A. And we've now taken, we've eliminated 12 of our, our, our 40, right? So that means we've got another, you know, 28 left to place. Okay, let's go back to our map. 
and we're going to stay on the map, and I'm just going to go through room to room. Okay, so if we take there, the next place that they might go is as we go up this hallway here, there is a statue with a secret door behind it. Uh, I put a little alcove there, but I'm going to say that they don't know about that. So the next major space they'd be in is this one over here, which is going to be a two. So a two is going to be, let's see, let's roll a six. I got six. Empty. And we'll roll again to see if there's any treasure in here. Maybe they left something. No, the empty room is empty. So a two is empty. So I'm not going to call it a two because I will. It's just an empty room. Any room that's, that's not listed is just going to, any room that doesn't have a number in it is basically empty. Um, you know what, though? But that's that secret area behind might have... Actually, I'll, yeah, you know, let's roll it. It wouldn't have a monster in it because it wouldn't have an Anathal in it. Anyways, let's see. Two, and of course I rolled monster. Yeah, I don't see how a Neanderthal could be in that room, so I'm just going to say no to that. Um, I'm just curious if I roll treasure, I might let it happen. So we'll go up to this next room. If you go up the hallway, you're following up. So that was the passageway on the left, right? So now to the right, there's a doorway. So let's roll for that room. Actually, I'll just keep that roll. There's number two. It is a monster in there, so that's A2. So let's roll to see if there's treasure. Six. No, there's just Neanderthals in there. Because again, this is the Neanderthal area. Two of them. And again, the thing here is I'm just roughing this out. Uh, if there's extra Neanderthals in the end, if there's too much treasure, all sorts of stuff, we will figure that out. So I just do this as a rough way to do it. Okay, so continuing this way, if we go to the east, basically, and then up that hallway, there's like two rooms up here. So the first one... It just has more Neanderthals in it. Oh, and I rolled a one. So that's monster and treasure. Okay, cool. So it's going to have a D10 of these Neanderthals. It's got six. That's a lot. And this one also has treasure. So again, I'm going to go up to the Neanderthal treasure. I'm just going to take the top one. A piece of jewelry worth 800 gold pieces. Now I forgot. <laughs> I said something for myself and then I forgot. Each of the areas that have the Neanderthals has a 25% chance to be a white ape in here. So let's see if the first room A1 has a white ape. I'm rolling percentile. I rolled A6. Nope. I'm rolling percentile for room 2. Nope. Rolling percentile for room 3. No. Okay. So it might end up that they're just all going to be wandering or whatever. We'll figure that out. So this is now A3. Has some Neanderthals in it. And then we'll go to a four and or you know the next room down two which has more hand with all so we'll get the all grouped together uh and there is treasure okay so there you go d10 there there's only one in there okay and then um it's got the next treasure so now what i end up doing is this whole area is going to be a three is going to be basically both of these rooms Okay, so I'm just going to put one more Neanderthal, so seven Neanderthals, and then two of those chunks of treasure in there. Uh, but I will roll another 25% to see if there's a an ape with them. If so, this could be a big deal. Nope. So this is a piece of jewelry worth 900 gold pieces. And again, this may seem like a lot of um, treasure, but this is a second level uh, of, the, of a mega dungeon. There's going to be multiple sessions in here. This needs to be able to level up the you know the party basically to, to the next level so um you gotta make sure that you're thinking everybody's gonna have to get a, a few thousand gold pieces okay cool i'm not gonna worry about that secret room unless we end up with extra stuff so now i'm gonna go back down to where a2 is and i'm gonna go instead to the west to that room off to the side which is actually the last room in the neanderthal place so uh, we might have to put something in that secret room but let's see or well two more neanderthals but i'm getting a lot of which is probably good there's four in there, four Neanderthals, and there's only one piece of trash left, so it's going to be in that room. It's, it's a piece of jewelry worth 1,200 gold pieces. And let's see if there's an ape in this one. Huh, 24, which is exactly, you know, 25%, so there is one white ape. Okay, they're going to earn that 1,200 gold pieces, that's for sure. So that's a four. All right, so let's see what we've got now, what we've, what we've used up here, or used as far as Neanderthals and stuff, and we'll see if we feel like this is enough. We don't have to use all 40 here because remember we have wandering monster neanderthals as well so i want to use probably 30 of them at least ideally right so there's 40 total uh let's see room number one let's go back to this room number one here has got uh 12. 
Room number two is two, so that's 14. Uh, then we got plus uh, seven is uh, 21. And then we've got 25, basically. Whoosh. All right, so I'm going to want to either... I can either bulk up some of these, which I think I'll do. We only have two in this room, so let's actually make that... I want to do at least five or six more. So let's go two more there. So there's four. And then I'm actually going to put something in this other room where, I, where we rolled empty, because it was empty, empty. I'm just going to make it have near as in it. So that's going to be a five. Because we don't want to make each of these fights too crazy tough, because, well, I mean, they are only second level. So at this point, I'm going to put a five, and I'm going to put five Neanderthals in that room and no treasure. Five Neanderthals, no treasure. Okay, so that now gives us a 30, and then the rest are wandering. And of course, obviously, if they if we, if we kill or encounter a trap or whatever we want to do, uh, more than... 10 uh, wandering ones then we'll start taking them from the rooms but at this point there's um there's basically uh that's basically 30 30 of the 40 are used and i'll even make an area here placed 30 of 40 and one of four you know i'm wondering too because they're warring factions i'm actually coming back to think about this what i'm actually gonna do is come up here and i'm actually gonna say when i look at this here where it says uh neanderthals and berserkers for six and seven I'm going to say area inhabitants. Okay. This way, depending on where you are, you're going to have a pretty good chance that you're going to run into what lives there. It also takes out the idea of like a berserker being in the Neanderthal area. Not that it couldn't be that case, but um, this will probably help to make sure that you're going to run into a bunch of Neanderthals in the, in the Neanderthal area and a bunch of... Uh, Berserkers in the Berserker area, right? Cool. All right, that's that's area A placed. Area B is going to be Berserker. Okay. Okay, so now again, we're going to go through this. Same deal. This area over here on the map is our Berserker area. And we're going to work our way through and we're going to put them where we can. And then if there's any extra, we'll figure it out from there. So we're going to start, I'm going to call this room right here. Actually, no, a couple of things here, sorry. I'm actually putting the doppelganger in this area, um, which I'm just going to call C. So, uh, actually, no, let me change that idea. I kind of made this area for the doppelganger, so... This area right here, the secret area. So this is going to be C, which we'll deal with in a second. So the doppelganger is going to be there, including all of the doppelganger stuff. So that's going to be a big treasure room right there. Um, as far as the the berserkers go, um, now that I'm seeing how many of them there are, I had the idea that this room B1 would be divide, a divided curtain area. So I'm going to say that this area in the back, um, you know, here is like a living area. So we're going to, we're going to put some berserkers in there for sure. Um, we're going to put, let's say, a third of the population. So we'll say in, in room B1, there's going to be 10 Berserkers. Um, and we're going to put some of the treasure possibly. And the way I'm going to determine if we do that or not is I'm just going to roll assuming monsters in the room to see if there's treasure. So basically, one through four, they keep treasure in this room. Otherwise, no. No, one through three, rather. Yeah, I got a three. So there's going to be treasure in this room. Um, this is a big part of the Berserker's uh, stash. They've got a total of six pieces of treasure. This is a third, so I'll put two two pieces in here. I'll take the first two. Okay. So it's going to have 10 Berserkers, comma, piece of jewelry worth 700, comma, piece of jewelry worth 800. Okay. Now, number two, area number two, let's see what the next room is. So I'm going to, if we could take, if we go from room B1, uh, and we go to the west through that door. I kind of set this up as like a dormitory area. So again, they're probably going to be some in here, but uh, let's see. We'll roll. Yeah, one. There's some in here. Okay, so let's see how many berserkers. Now, normally, like I said, this should be one to six, but because there's a dormitory area, well, I'm going to do each room separately here, right? So I'm going to count each of these rooms except for... Um, so basically, this area here... is effectively, well, and here too, I suppose, 
is effectively three rooms. So I'm going to do three rolls, and they're going to be in that area. Like they're going to they're going to fill that whole area. So I'm going to roll three d six. Enjoy. One, four. <laughs> it's not a lot. Nine and five. Okay, so that is uh, ten. Ten berserkers there. Oh, that's twenty berserkers in a really close area. You know what? That might be dangerous because if they come down that hallway and get in a fight with the first ten, they're going to have twenty berserkers on their tail immediately. And there's really nowhere for them to go, right? They're basically trapped unless they find that secret door. So that might be a total, total death trap. So we need to be careful with that kind of stuff, right? So instead of doing that, I'm going to change my idea there. And I'm going to actually put in room, in area. I'm going to actually change this area here. Um, and again, this is where you use the dice, but then you think about it. This, this dormitory area is going to be B1. Because we got 10 Berserkers in there. Right? It's funny, that's exactly what I rolled. And what I'm going to do instead out here is I'm going to make this be like their general guard area. Because right? they know people come and go. And also the zombies that come in and out of here because of the, the thing from the first level. So I'll put 1d6 Berserkers in that first room. Okay, 4. Okay. It's still a lot, but... It is more possible now that the party will come in and take out the four berserkers really quickly and we'll deal with that. So I'm going to go, oh, let me roll a d6 to see if there's any treasure with them. There's not. Roll a six. So I'm going to go like this. Uh, I'm just changing my thing here, guys. So 10 berserkers with jewelry is going to actually be in B2. Um, and six, no. Four berserkers, no treasure, are going to be in uh, room one. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm going to make this. So what's interesting here is I want to make uh, the uh, this area here be B3, right? This is going to be only because it's a secret door in there. And I want to make sure that there's... Um, so this is the... Uh, Cult leader. Quarters. And we will say that there is a, uh, you know, one in, because remember, he goes around to the Neanderthals too. So I'm going to say there's a one in, uh, two in six chance. The doppelganger uh, is in here. So basically, this is our, uh, you know, if the doppelganger is there, he's there as a berserker, right? And then I'm going to say, um, just while I'm here, well, I'm, I'll be able to see in a second. And, you know, okay, so that's good. So that's three. All right, because let's, now we've, so far we've used 14, almost half the berserkers. Um, if we come uh, out of the, out of uh, that room to the west and you get that sloping passage and we head north, there's like a kind of a weird shaped room over here. Um, this one is, uh, we'll roll for it. Two, there's monsters in there. And Berserkers come in groups of one to six. Six, I'm like, huh, okay. So B4, that's going to have six Berserkers. One of the issues with this dungeon that I can see is that a lot of stuff's really close together. So the party's going to have to be really fast when they fight these things, if they fight them, because, um, otherwise they're going to find themselves, you know, in a position where they're going to be, get overwhelmed. There's a couple of good choke points, though. So worst case scenario, they should be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, there's going to be six berserkers in here, and let's see if there's any treasure. Uh, two, so there is treasure. So again, I'll give them one of the treasures. Uh, 1,200 gold piece piece of jewelry. So this is... Um, you know, we'll, we'll, you can uh, flavor up however we want to do this jewelry, but right now it's just a matter of placing it so we know where everything is. Okay, so there is this other room up here that's kind of diagonal to it that is actually a secret room. And Berserkers are, you know, and they got the doppelganger and also they're, uh, I don't want to say intelligent, but they're more intelligent. So there's a chance that they might be in there. So let's roll. Five, which means that it is empty. So no, there's no, um, there's nothing in that room. It's empty. They're going to find that secret room. It hasn't been discovered yet. So we'll put something interesting in there as far as flavor text, but it, there's no treasure or no monster or anything in there. 
Okay, so heading north on the, the hallway always to the west, there's that kind of, it's basically the last room in this berserker area. So let's roll to see what's in there. Six, would, which would be empty. All right, so we know now that we still have some treasure left, and we've only used, well, we've used 20 of the 30 berserkers, which isn't too bad. But I think what I'm going to do is make another room with uh, with berserkers in it, just so that we can have less wandering monsters, because it's kind of a small space for there to be that many wandering monsters. So, all right, so I'm going to put four berserkers in this room here, which is uh, B5. And will they have treasure? No, they don't actually. Okay, so the, according to the rule, they don't have treasure. So, what that tells me is I'm going to make another room here, like I, like I said, which is going to be B6. And that is going to have treasure in it. I'm going to put it as a secret room, and that's going to actually have a decent amount of treasure. It's going to have three pieces of jewelry in it um, with a total value of. Uh, uh, 4,300 gold pieces, right? So hopefully they find it. Cool. All right. So now um, this part is effectively done. I'm just going to do C while we're here. C is going to be area C. Lair of the doppelganger. So I can do this so you can see my screen. So I'm just kind of typing this up. So area C is layer of the doppelganger. Okay, so anyways, I also want to come up here and go 4, 10, that's 14, 25. So I'm going to again, make a note. And keep in mind, guys, that berserkers are um, 1 plus 1 hit die. So they're not tremendously tough. But I believe Neanderthals are two hit dice. So that section is going to be a lot of harder. That's going to be a much harder fight. Um, the Berserkers do get bonuses once they start getting ragey stuff. But if you can get them quick enough, that probably should be an issue. Um, so that the Berserker area is actually going to be the easier area. And probably the one they're going to go through first, right? The, the, they're either going to come down through the Ziggurat and face a whole bunch of Berserkers. And get, a, assuming they clear this area, get a whole bunch of gold. Um... It, which will, will maybe even bolster some people up like a cleric or something, maybe third level. So, or at the very least, if they're first level, they'll get away to second before they face the Neanderthals further on. So it shouldn't be too, too bad. I mean, if they find, if they run into this doppelganger, that's going to be bad news. But it's also going to be good news because it has a ton of treasure. And I'm going to actually give a one in six chance. Occupied. And the doppelganger has a ton of treasure, like I said. If you kill that doppelganger um, and get out with that treasure, you're going to be doing pretty well at this point. It'll also uh, obviously disrupt this entire, um, entire place, so which can work really well to the, the PC's, uh, you know, situation. I mean, these people being cultists, it's not going to be easy to um, to get them to just to sway them. But if, if you know, the, the PC is going to figure out a way to do it, that could be very, very good. Um, of course, we know room 13 is the mummy. Okay, so there's only one more area left, and that is going to be our unique area. Let's just see what happens. We're going to call this area D. I'm going to come back over here, go to the, the pad. So keeping in mind that this uh, this area is someplace they're going to only be able to access if they had come down through uh, the, uh, you know, the doorways above. So it's kind of like a weird area. Um, and I thought it could be fun to play around. Now, if we don't find anything interesting, do it rolling randomly. Excuse me, I have some ideas. If we don't see find anything interesting rolling randomly, I have some ideas. But let's just see what we get because sometimes really random ideas can work really well. Area D. And also just so that we're talk about this for a second. 
Uh, let's take a quick look at the map. If you look at the map, because again, we have wandering monsters, right? Every area is, is actually accessible. The thing is, is that this area over here is the only way into this area, except from, from level one, um, is this door, which means that, you know, things could have got through the door. Maybe the door is open. Who knows? Um, this this shaft, I'm going to kind of write something about this room. It's going to be a little... The monsters that live here know that that shaft goes to the third and fourth level, which means they know that monsters can come up. <laughs> so I'm going to say they probably try to avoid this area if they can. So generally speaking, you're not going to... Uh, it's not, That's why the Berserkers haven't taken over the area or the Neanderthals, right? Plus, they've got the, the doppelganger taking care of them. Maybe that's where the doppelganger came from, right? And because of that, but but even though that's the case, there is also a secret door right here that leads into the space. Two of them, actually. Three. Well, not two. Yeah, there's two and then another one. So uh, basically, with some secret doors, they can get in or they can get in other through other means. Uh, you don't want to block the space off completely, but I also want it to be something that is different than the rest of the, the Mega Dungeon. It's almost like a sub-level of level two, if you want to think of it like that. So anyways, that's just my thought on this. Let's go back to the BX book and let's see uh, what might appear on this level. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to put a one here. And I'm going to jump over to the BX book so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to now uh, just roll. I'm going to roll for the first room that they come into when they come off the stairs. I roll a d6. There is a monster in the room, of course. There's a monster. So we have a monster in this room. We don't know what it is because we're going random here. And I'm going to just go down to the level two wandering monsters and let's just see what we get. Again, this could be really interesting. It could be really dumb. And if it's really dumb, then we won't use it. Um, six. But no. That's interesting. Why would there be a null here? It'd be, it would be an odd thing to for a null to be in this area, right? Unless there's another way into this space. Again, like the the way the Neanderthals came in, maybe there is a way into this space that the nulls know about. So it's not impossible that a null might actually be in here. Uh, so let's 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 you know let's look at the null for a second in BX, and let's see what the deal is. I believe that gnolls are a little bit, um, I can't remember, they're a little different than they are in some of the later editions. Um, so let's just see if we can, if they would be underground, if this, you know, is something that they might actually seek out. And let's see if this works for us. Oh, <laughs> I was looking under the ends for some reason in my brain. Uh, all right, let's get to the G's. What I was actually thinking would be cool in here would be something like living statues and stuff. But again, sometimes it's nice to just get a, a random roll and see what it can come up with. All right. Gnolls are beings of low intelligence that appear to be human like hyenas. Okay, so that's kind of modern. They may use any weapons. They're strong, but dislike work and prefer to bully and steal for a living. For every 20 gnolls, there will be a new gnoll leader. You know what? They're kind of like pumped up orcs. Uh, gnolls are rumored to be a, the result of a magical combination of gnoll, gnome, and troll by a evil magic user. Um, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's make it completely weird and put some gnolls down here. Now, I'm going to treat it like a wandering monster. So I'm not, this isn't going to be a lair um, of gnolls because that feels like it'd be weird. Uh, so I'm going to actually go with uh, a wandering monster, a gnoll, and we're going to roll a d6. Two. All right, so there's two gnolls down here. Now, in order to justify the gnolls or figure out how the gnolls got in here, we need to make another way to get into this room, which is kind of cool. And in a way, what I did was... <laughs> it's funny, I kind of set myself up for this. We go back here. I put a little room right here. You can see this room uh, here is has a, has a collapse. So what I'm thinking is go in here and I'm going to go back to my map layer so I can actually change the map what we're going to do is we're going to put a tunnel okay and then what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make a note here so this is basically how the null is cut in right and what we're going to do is 
this is going to be a subset of this room and we're going to basically make it so that this knockdown area you can climb through if the, if the party wants to try all right so now that we did that let's go back to our markup level so i'm not writing on the map the reason why i'm doing that guys is because now if you think about the way i'm doing this i'm doing all the markup on a different layer so that if I want to make like a player map or use it for a virtual tabletop, I can go like this and then, you know, they, all the numbers are gone. That's why I'm doing it that way. Okay. So, so now we've got that going on. So this needs to definitely have a number. This is D, right? So uh, area D, this is D1. Uh, and I'm just going to put it in the description, right? So I'm going to say um, two nulls. Two nulls have found a tunnel leading into the space. It is located through the rubble in the room. It is located through the rubble in the room to the south west. Perfect. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, a reason why these nulls might be here. Now, the other thing we're going to do is when you're dealing with treasure, right, typically the treasure type that the monsters have is not what they don't have it on them when they're a wandering monster, right? So we're not going to give them wandering monster treasure. What we're going to actually do is I'm going to roll, and if treasure comes up, I roll a two, so there should be treasure. We're going to use the unguarded treasure. So there's a table called unguarded treasure. Let me find it. Now. Yeah. So if you go over here um, in the BX book, you can see that on the right hand side, there's there's an area where um, effectively, if the room, if you rolled like treasure, but only a trap or a special and not a monster, that's what you'd use. Or in this case, because it's really just a wandering monster. So I'm going to, it's level two, so I'm going to go, uh, so I can see here, it's 1d12 times 100 silver pieces. There's always silver pieces. Eight. So eight, eight, 800 silver pieces. Again, it's not a lot, but. Um, and there's a chance, a 50% chance for some gold. Let's roll. I'm just going to roll d12 again, and you know, one, three, six will be good. Yeah, I rolled a one. Uh, 1d6 times 100 gold pieces. Four. Uh, there's a 10% chance there might be gems. I'll just roll a d10, and if I get a one, we will get a two. There's a 5% chance that there's jewelry, so I'll roll a d20, and if I get a one, nope, got an 11. And there's an 8% chance of any one magic item. I'll just roll percent off of that. Nope, no magic item. Okay. So this is a bunch of silver in this room. It's so a little silver and gold, not a whole lot of treasure, but you know, that's still, uh, I think it's 10 silver to a gold in BX. So that's still 480 experience points, right? So that's not too bad. Um, and there's only two gnolls, which aren't too terrible. And then we go, we were able to make a room work, right? With just, uh, <laughs> just rolling randomly and we can, we can make it work with our dungeon. And we've actually added another way in, which is always cool. Um, all right, let's go back to the iPad. Let's see what else we got. All right, so if we follow the path down to the south, there's a secret door up there. If we follow the path down to the south and we follow that tunnel over to the west, I'm just going to go um, take care of the bottom ones first. So follow it over, and then there's a passageway to the north. We pass that, and then we go past another passageway to the north and into that room, that weird-shaped, uh, like, um, you know, it's not the quadrilateral. It's the one that, tell me in the comments below which one is the two lines of parallel and the other two are not. Is that a parallelogram? I think it is. Okay. Let's roll to see if anything in that room. Five. Five is empty. So no. Okay, I'm going to go um, past the parallelogram room for a second through the one that's basically three secret doors. Five. Empty. Okay, no problem. And I'll go back to parallelogram room and go north to that first hexagon room. Roll to one. That's a monster. All right. Let's see what's in here. Now we're deeper in here, right? So... This is, we could also, the other way to do this, guys, is for our random monster, if we didn't want to be as random as I am right now, um, we could also roll on uh, the, our own wandering monster list, right? So let's go, 
with a level two wandering monster. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to roll a d6. And if it's a one or a two, it's going to be a level one wandering monster, three or four, level two, and then five or six, level three. We'll try to mix up a little bit. Four, so it's a level two. Two. Two's Berserkers. Bers 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 okay, so maybe they made their way over here. So that's fine. We'll put Berserkers over here. It's d6. Two of them. So they're going to be here. Oop, I put a B there for some reason. Not a uh, not a D. Now let's go back. This is D2. Now what's interesting about this, so maybe they're they're scouting, right? So D2 is going to have two Berserkers scouting. And again, we'll roll here to see if there's any treasure. They're not going to have an unlimited empty room treasure, basically. Um, one, so there is treasure in this area, in D2. So let's go back. And we'll do the exact same process. Ooh, 1,100 silver pieces. Uh, let's see, the percent chance of gold. There is gold. 200. Uh, let's see, 10% chance. Let's use the percentile. 10% of gems. No, I rolled a 12. Close. 5% of jewelry. One. I rolled a zero one, so there is jewelry. Um, a D6 jewelry spell. Let me roll the magic item first. No magic item. Okay. So there's D6 jewelers. Two. Okay, so as we, we went through before with the one uh, side quest, if you guys followed that one, jewelry in BX is worth 3d6 times 100 gold pieces a piece. So we're going to roll first jewelry. One, six is seven, and five is 12, so 1,200. I'll say it's a necklace. And the second one is five, nine, and four is 1300, and that'll be our ring. Wow, okay, this is a pretty good, <laughs> two berserk, this is a pretty good little room, right? Um, all right, cool. Now we have to kind of think about this, because if we look at the way this room is, and where these berserkers are, if there's other monsters here, they're probably going to know the berserkers are there. So the berserkers are truly wandering, right? Um, but let's roll for the big room, because I might end up just moving it around so it makes more sense. Let's see what's in the big room. Three. Three is a trap. Okay. This is interesting. Let's see if there's a treasure. Uh, a one or a two of the D6 means there's treasure. There's not. So there's a trap in this one. So we're going to call this D3. Okay. And there's a trap there. I'll deal with that in a second. Traps are always interesting, right? I actually have a bunch of traps that we have got from the first level. So I might just roll on a trap list. Or maybe we'll use one of the ones that are here. Um... Let's go to the north and the first room, that the one that over to the west. Let's roll for that room. It's gonna roll. I'm going to do the traps at the end. Five is empty. And the one next to it, three is another trap. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> roll D4. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to take the two rooms to the south. One of them I have no way to get into. So I don't know why I didn't do it. Open the secret door there, I guess. Apparently I made a room that uh, we can't get into. Cool. All right. Let's roll for that one more room. This is the last room. Four. Four is special. Oh, interesting. Ooh, okay. I already have an idea now. So, okay, so let's take a look at this. We've actually rolled, um, we rolled the Berserker, right? And a whole bunch of treasure for this area. The treasure is not on the Berserker. The treasure is in the room, right? In this room over here, D2. But that's like a side room and... Um, then we also rolled two traps, one in the main room and one in one of the top rooms. Um, and then a special, which is really kind of interesting. 
So I think what I'm going to do, which I think will be really interesting, is I'm actually going to put in D4, D5, rather, that should be D5 down here. Let me kind of, let me kind of walk through it first, and then I'll, uh, then I'll actually write it up. All right, so in D5, I'm actually going to put, um, oh, I never rolled to the other room, the empty room, the secret room. Three. Okay. Oh, you know, okay, that's, that's perfect. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to put traps. Here we go. There's them on the map, right? You guys can see the map? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. I'm actually going to make another layer just so I don't, just because I don't like what I'm doing here. I'm going to put a trap here. I'm going to put a trap here. I'm going to put a trap here. Right? Then what I'm going to do, since we rolled three traps in the area, right? Then I'm actually going to put, um, in, in this room here, the, the D5 room, which I'm going to change these numbers probably, there's going to be a special, right? So effectively what I'm going to do is, oh, this is funny. You can do that. Okay. So I'm going to go like this. Let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of these, um, these, these, uh, these letters for a second. Cause then we'll, we'll, then I'll have to write it up. I'm actually going to just make this, um, Okay, so D1 is that main room. This big room is going to be D2. So I can write all this stuff up. All right, so what's going to happen here is this is going to be D3. Oh, my handwriting is terrible today. So in room D3, there is going to be something that's going to trigger a teleporter. And that teleporter will bring you to room D4. Actually, I'm just going to call this D3A. Okay. And in that room, there will be further teleporters that will teleport you to each of these other areas here, which is going to be, uh, these are D4. So D4, A. D4, B, D4, C. And also teleport you back. So essentially what will happen is it's going to be like a control panel. And there's going to be, it's going to take multiple people obviously to do this because you're still, almost like you think of like a Star Trek thing, right? You're going to stand on it and somebody's going to press a button or if you press it, I suppose, if you're by yourself, um, you will then teleport into one of these rooms which has this treasure, right? Because there's a bunch of treasure here. Um, there's actually, right, there's a, a pile of gold and silver, there is a necklace, and there is a ring. So all of those things will be in clear view. And if you teleport into these rooms to get in there, you can get them without any effect. Otherwise, you're going to be faced with a trap. Now, uh, on that note, if you just went up the hallway into D4, then, you know, you could get that treasure, which will just be the, uh, the, the, the coins, because I ruled that first. D4C, I should say. All right, so... Let's see how this is going to work. Now, let me figure out what the traps are going to be. Um, they need to be some kind of a... Uh... Huh. I like the idea of... See, I love the idea of teleporters. Huh. I wonder if they should teleport you. Okay, so, all right, let's go. We're going to come up with our traps right now. Since we're using all this teleport stuff, we're getting into this high magic stuff at this point, right? Sorry, so let's go to my, um, my thing here so we can write this up. So D2, the area D2. This, the Berserkers, of course, are just going to be in the space. Um, they will just be there, and we figure out what's going on with them. They don't know what's going on. Um, all right, that's D2. Now, D3 is going to be... Um, it's going to be a pool. Pool of liquid with a soft... Luminance. Hi, not it, not it. With the soft blue luminance, teleports to D3A. Effectively, what's happening is when you go into room D3A, they're going to be able to step into a stall. Somebody can throw a switch. It'll teleport you. If you were by yourself, you could still do it, but you wouldn't be able to teleport back, essentially. Um, now, just to quickly write up the other areas, because this is getting very, very long. So we're going to go, this one is 4A. That one is a 
Gold's a ring. Worth 13,000 gold pieces. Uh, 1,300 gold pieces. Walking through the doorway. Pulley ports. To the surface. Port B. This one holds a necklace worth 1200 gold pieces. Walking through doorway. This is in either direction, of course. Teleports. I should say passing through, not walking through, because somebody will say they'll just jump over it. That's the door we teleports to the surface. 1d4. 1d4 times 10 feet above the ground. Right? Ball damage. And for C. Um, is going to be exactly the same, except for it's going to hold the coins. Uh, holds these coins, which is basically uh, 1,100 soul pieces, uh, 200 gold pieces passing through the doorway, teleports. Uh, to the surface, 1d6 times 10 feet above the ground with fall damage. Okay. Now, that, that can be rough. <laughs> or not, you know? I mean, they might roll one and then roll low, down, low on damage. So effectively, they can still find this secret door in D2. It's a large space. Um, but if they um, if they go through the, the pool in D3, which... You know, maybe players do that, maybe they won't. They can get into uh get into D three A. Um I am gonna say secret door in D three A is clearly visible from inside. So if they do get in there, then they know they can get back. Like that's not really a problem. And effectively, you know, obviously any player skill that could be used to get across these traps it is totally fine. But if they just kind of, the way to do it is to basically go through the teleporter. Um, simple as that. Maybe there's some kind of a museum, who knows, right? It's some kind of weird level that kind of doesn't jive with the plan. And I think that's interesting. So this is almost like, D2 is almost like a sub-level. It's like level two and a half, right? Um, it's different. You can still connect it, you know? So you definitely can go from place to place. You know, no matter what you do, you are going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be able to get the treasure if you want to. Um, but either way, you can get into the main dungeon, which is really what the, the goal is, right? This is a mega dungeon. They're just trying to get treasure. They're trying to do their deal, right? So they're they're going to do what they can to, uh, to get the treasure. But there is a lot of treasure in here and a lot of adventure and a lot of variety. Um, I think that players really like it. It's going to be a lot. This is going to be one of those dungeons where it's going to be it, it pretty much potentially is going to be a lot of fighting unless they can figure out a way to either uh, negotiate. Because remember, this is BX, right? So don't immediately think that, oh, they run to Neanderthal, so they're going to attack them. There's going to be a reaction roll. There's going to be, the players are going to be able to to try to talk their way out of it, convince people, use charm person, use a sleep spell. So where it might seem very, very over the top deadly, clever play will get them places if they just charge in and start fighting stuff it's going to be difficult especially the Ner the neanderthals area that area is going to be really really tough because they're like i said two at dice piece so mm, that could be tough the berserker a little bit less the doppelganger by itself if you don't get they don't get mobbed is a tough creature to beat but if they have magic um and they can take it down they're gonna get a lot of treasure including a plus two sword which is pretty sweet so in any case 
you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, please. And, uh, you know, leave some comments. I'd love to know. I know the Mega Dungeon ones are a little longer. Um, I'd love to know what you think about these. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to I'm trying to formulate a way to put these uh, adventures out there for you guys to run and stuff. So uh, working on that. But I do appreciate everybody watching. And uh, I'll see you next time.